God bless you, YouTube. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, brothers and sisters on the ramparts, I salute you in Jesus' name. Uh, but housekeeping, our study today is going to be in Colossians chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 11 to begin with. I encourage you to read the whole chapter if you can. Um, it would be better for you to do so. But I want to explain this to you that it was written, Paul, Paul wrote this while in prison for preaching the word of Christ and the, the word of salvation. So just so you know, that's beforehand, please let's bow our heads for a short, quick little blessing on the service, on the sermon. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now. We praise you. We give you the glory, the power, and the honor that is all entitled to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us grace. Let your grace and your holy anointing be upon us as we go into the word, Lord, and that the words that come out of our mouths and that we speak only in your name, Jesus, and in your behalf, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. <coughs> Pardon me. Chapter 4 of Colossians. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving, with all praying for us, praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in, in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Let's stop right there. Um, <coughs> we all know Paul was put in prison for preaching the word of salvation the message of salvation and everybody needed to repent and come to Christ and accept Christ as their savior. Albeit, he was in prison for this. And while he's in there, he's sending out letters to the ministry and letters of approval to people speaking on his behalf about Christ, that Paul supported them. And we are to, and the things that he says in here is to give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer and watch it with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer. Remember we were talking yesterday about the communication line between God and us, our spiritual phone bill. This is a confirmation of that. That's one of the things we got to do is continually in prayer and that we keep the other apostles and the other missionaries and the other preachers in prayer and that they're guided by God's will and they're not guided by their own selfish lusts. And that's been the issue that we've had lately, is a lot of pastors are failing to do so. Okay, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I'm also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. That right there is praying that God controls our speech and how we should address somebody. Rather than letting our own selfish anger get involved, let us let God guide us by praying continually. Don't plan what you're going to say, but know what you're going to say because God is going to guide your heart. If you, want, if you have your heart as pure as it's supposed to be, God communicates with you and he allows you to speak what needs to be said. And this has been the frustration of mine that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, that I speak only for what God is telling me to speak is what Paul said. He says here, now we'll continue on in five. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Taking the time is what he means by without redeeming, without wanting something in return. Okay. Walk in wisdom. So being wise when you're walking out there to talk to these people. Okay. It means that you've studied up what you're going to tell them. Okay, let your speech be always with grace. Uh, everyone asks how I can speak in love. I get angry. I get mad. Oh, yeah, I get mad, children. But we as Christians and true Christians and divine warriors need to not get angry at the sin, but angry at the ignorance and deal with the ignorance in love and grace. Tell them what you think. Tell them and talk to them and explain it to them that they're wrong and their deception is rampant. Yes, but don't do it in a way that you're bashing them or attacking them. And that's the thing. Is we, I controlled what I said and it proved my point. And that's because I did it in grace and I seasoned it with salt, which means in good flavor or good taste. Not bashing them, 
if they choose to not listen to God's word and God's message, walk away. Shake the dust from your feet in victory. And that's the subjects that we've been talking about. Is we got to pay our spiritual phone bill so we can know the difference. And that's been the problem is we don't see the difference. If we're getting mad at them and we're getting angry and we're pounding our fists and we're beating our chests, who are we satisfying? Our own selfish attitudes? Or are we satisfying our own unmet needs? And that's what we come down to. Who is it that's controlling you? Is it I? Is it the man? I? The selfish man? Or is it God? The big I. The big I am. Should be the one controlling you, not yourself. Take I out of the equation and say, speak only that which is holy. Kind of hard to do. Honestly, it's hard to do, and, you know, I could go on all day with that, but I feel for you, brethren. But we shouldn't argue amongst each other. We should talk, and we should explain our points clearly enough and not go off half-cocked. That's been my issue with life lately, family, is too many Christians go off instead of listening to God, letting God guide our speech, let God control what we are going to say. We got to do it in grace and in thanksgiving. Be thankful for the message God has given us, and then we share that message of hope and love to the fellow brethren that might be in error. Okay? And I love this. That was verse 6 that we just covered. All my state shall Tychius declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and a fellow servant in the Lord whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might, fulfill, he might know your estate and comfort your hearts. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved, which is one of you, that they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. Aristarchus, my fellow uh, prisoner, saluteth you, and Marcus' sister's son, to Barnabas, touching whom you have received commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. And Jesus, which is called Justice, who are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow workers under the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort to me. Okay, he goes into, he goes in further, and we're going to, we're going to stop right there on that scripture, family. But uh, he continues to go on about salute, salutations, and other ones that have been long-bearing and long-suffering and have zeal for Christ. Uh, that's something I want you guys to read on your own. That's why I didn't put the full scripture in today. Um, I will put the reading comes from, but it's just taking up so much space on my page, on my video, that it takes a long time to produce a single video that I wanted to get to the key scriptures right now. <coughs> and that's why we discussed it the way we did and the way I put it out there today is that we've got to, long, we've got to be thankful of the messages God give us so that we can be thankful enough and truthful enough to share them with man and the lost. These scriptures all tie in together. They all tie in together to the word of God that we've already shared this week. And we'll continue to share those words and that ministry because my message is about spiritual connections to Christ and to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer. So we can then have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God through the Son. And that we have to know in season what we are going to say. And we have to say it with such love and care that any anger towards us is not us that they're angry at. They're angry at God. And that we can be thankful that it's not us that they're really attacking. But we know we're just a vessel for Christ and for God. We're just a vessel. God's the ultimate speaker. And he will give us what we need to say in his time and at the time that we do. And that's why a lot of people say study, 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 study. Sometimes studying doesn't help. Somebody's going to catch you off guard and catch you unprepared. Satan's job is to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. And a lot of people don't understand that, but that is it. I mean, it's just, I mean, I could go on constantly in this Bible of things that are like that. I can show you Old Testament sections where this Bible is so beat up and falling apart that the pages are literally shredding out of the Bible from how much I've read it. But I just want to get on that and get your attention, family. Okay? Is if you think you're right, go back in the Word and see if your Word can, can 
continually continually is in accordance with God's commands. Did we do it in love or did we do it out of anger? And when you realize you're getting angry, right, take a step back, say, I gotta pop, I gotta walk away. If you don't, you're gonna lose what you got. And you're gonna start beating people up and you don't wanna be beating people up. You wanna be able to do it in love. Show them that they're wrong, walk away. Shake your dust off your feet and walk away. Now, I wanna show you something here in Psalms and it's Psalms 19. Verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. It goes back to confirmation. That was Psalms 19, verse 7. It's just funny that God gives us these words. And he says to me, um, he says also in 73rd Psalm, verse 28, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. These are just some extra scriptures for you to look at, family, and to understand. And if you do, okay, you'll get to this point here too. Um, verse 18 of 145. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Um, just some extra scripture for you, family, um, is to go back with the spiritual connections. They're all confirmations of yesterday's sermon, and now we're to today's sermon. And now we get an additional bonus. God bless you. Have a great day. Um, you'll hear me mention them on the video. That's the only way you're going to find them because I can't remember all the ones I just gave you. Except for Colossians 4 will be the main one that will be in the title. That will be in the notes on the page. On the description. Uh, the scripture won't be there. But then you go through your Bible. And I'm going to challenge you to come up with at least two additional verses to the ones I mentioned. To confirm or counter what I what I ministered and to show me a different translation if I'm wrong but I know my spirit comes from God the Father and I know what God's telling me to tell you and so as I plant the seed like may God water it and Jesus reap the harvest God bless you have a great day may the Lord of the Lord of grace and his the Lord of all creation and his son under the grace of God which we are all called upon Bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.